Hey folks, Dave here. I'm coming to you guys at an absolutely awful time of the morning after what's pretty close to a 9 hour binge of the first part of Kingdom Come Deliverance. In this video, I'm going to give you guys my first impressions of everything from the beginning of the story to how the combat works to overall performance and bugs and all that sort of thing. But here's how it's going to work. I'm going to try and keep things as vague and spoiler free as possible because again, this is not a review. This is just some first impressions to help you guys if you're looking at possibly buying the game or you just want to see what it's like here at launch. To do this, I'm going to use bits of footage from throughout my entire 9-ish hours in the game so far. And while I'm going to try and keep these first impressions as balanced as possible, I'll go ahead and warn you guys up front. This is a game that I've been following for years and I've been very, very excited about it. In fact, leading up to the game, I was actually getting a bit worried that I was getting a little bit too hyped up for it. The good news is that despite some slight technical issues, the game is delivering actually exactly what I was hoping for. Let's go ahead and dive in and look at my first impressions of Kingdom Come Deliverance here on PC. The first thing I want to tackle here is performance because that's kind of been the question on everyone's minds. Wow, man, I am tired. I completely locked up there. The question on everyone's minds, how does the game run? Well, the good news is it appears to run quite well. Everything that you see in this video is going to be on the 1.2 launch patch, which was pretty massive at around 28 gigs. They've been working since the game went gold on basically all parts of the game to get things polished with that launch day patch. And yeah, that sucks to have a massive download, but it is nice to see the devs still working on some polish even last minute. Before I dive into how the game performs, here's the hardware that I'm running it on. My CPU is an Intel 8700K, currently overclocked to 4.7 GHz. I'm running 16 gigs of G-Skill DDR4 memory, clocking in at 3200 MHz. My graphics card is just a bone stock GTX 1080 from, I believe, Gigabyte. Not overclocked at all, just stock settings. I'm launching the game through Steam off of a older Mushkin solid state drive, just a standard SATA drive, nothing special there. And I'm playing the game on a ViewSonic G-Sync high frame rate monitor. This monitor is 2K, so it is 2560 by 1440p. I am running the game at 1440p on all ultra settings. Every single slider cranked all the way up, again at 1440p. The frame rate and performance at these settings with that hardware has been fantastic. I do want to make a note here that because my monitor does have G-Sync technology, which allows my frame rate to kind of move up and down, but I never see any kind of screen tearing, for a good bit of my recording before I really thought to change it, I was recording that variable frame rate at around, I'd say, 35 to 45 FPS, all ultra settings at 1440p. I do want to note here that because my monitor supports G-Sync and allows for a variable frame rate without screen tearing, I accidentally didn't lock my recordings at 30 FPS until about 4 or 5 hours in. So even though my monitor can display 35 to 45 FPS or even 60 FPS in that range without me ever seeing screen tearing, the frames don't quite line up in the recordings for some of the footage at the start. So if you guys see some weird frame stutter in the recording, that is just in the recording. I was not seeing that on my monitor. I just didn't think until almost too late to make sure that my monitor was synchronized with the recordings. Overall, the frame timings in the game have actually been very, very smooth. Most interior shots with a lot of cinematic depth of field, camera blur, if you will, would drop the frame rate down to right at 30, but outside I would get close to 60 running around and just exploring. I only saw a couple of frame rate dips into the 20s, mostly during very crowded areas of a marketplace, and always just briefly. I stayed in the mid 30s with these settings almost constantly. If you guys were like me and you played a lot of the beta for this game and had terrible crashes and awful performance with frame skipping and stuttering, I can kind of put your fears to rest here and at least for me on my hardware, this game is running amazingly well. The only real performance glitch I've gotten was, while playing in borderless windowed mode, I had a couple of cutscenes that strangely locked from 30 FPS even to 8 FPS even for the duration of the cutscene. Swapping over to full screen mode completely fixed this, even though it only happened a couple of times, for now, I'll just play the game in full screen mode. The payoff for the visuals is definitely there, as this game looks fantastic. 
You have occasionally slightly blurry textures, and the game definitely has that classic CryEngine pop-in, but the world looks incredibly realistic. The developer's attention to using real-world terrain features, real-world vegetation, and tons of micro-detailing has really helped to create, again, just a very grounded and real-feeling world. You do feel like the game is running quite well and rendering out a nice world for all that performance. Additionally, over the course of the 9 hours I've played, I got zero hard crashes, which is a good thing. You don't ever want to see that on launch day, but for a relatively indie title of this scale, I was expecting a crash or two, and I've gotten none. The game was open for hours upon hours flawlessly. Next up, let's talk about the combat, because that was one of my personal concerns coming from the older beta of the game. Is the combat too complicated, and does the frame rate hurt it? Well, I think the combat is actually quite fun. It does seem to be a lot more streamlined compared to what we saw in the beta version of the game. The combat is much more forgiving, and if you make a mistake here and there, you won't instantly get destroyed. In the start of the game, I had no trouble with a couple of random encounters where you had the option to actually fight things out. I think those first few encounters are artificially dumbed down to kind of ease you into the combat, but I found them to be a lot of fun. And now that I've gotten a bit further into the story, and I've gone through some more advanced sword fighting and archery training, I had no trouble going right into some test fighting with my trainers in the arena. And all the moves that you want to take full advantage of to do well at this combat, I didn't have any issues picking them up. Now, we'll see if I remember any of it in the morning, but I actually am enjoying the combat quite a bit. Archery, I'm still trying to level up, and the bow that I have right now is leveled above my character, so my character cannot use it very well. But the archery is quite a lot of fun. I love the fact that you have no cursor, and you really have to basically... Aim by instinct, if you will, to stay on target. With just a bit of practice, it's not too difficult, and I even won an archery competition right after training with the bows for the first time. Of course, I'm just scratching the surface of the combat. I only have basic armor and basic weapons, and I can't wait to see how things expand from here. But again, all the combat that I've been a part of so far has been a lot of fun. Next up, I want to speak just briefly about the story and the overall world and environment, because I don't want to spoil the story, of course, but I also don't want to spoil the exploration, because I mentioned in my preview of the game last summer that playing the dev version really gave me a feeling of stepping into oblivion for the first time, and I am very happy to say that that same feeling of wonder and amazement at the world remains here in the full launch version of the game. I'm sure that most of you guys have caught the most recent Kingdom Come launch trailers, but I was trying to dial my expectations of the story down just a bit because anyone can put together a well-edited trailer with enough time and energy, right? Well, the good news is I am really appreciating the story. For this studio's first game, I was worried that they would fall victim to video game syndrome and the story would be full of cliches and dramatic Michael Bay moments. And while I'm not saying that it's the next amazing thing for video game writing, the story has been well-paced, the camera angles have been good, the voice acting has been very good, enough to definitely help with the slightly stiff motion capture for the uh, mouth animations. The voice acting has been very, very good and has continued to get better as we see more and more main characters show up. Again, these guys are coming out of their gate with a massive RPG game and also their first single player story. And to actually have players caring about the characters that they've just been introduced to with no previous backstory is pretty awesome. Fantastic job on the story so far, guys. I'm very intrigued to see where things go from here. All right, guys, before sleep takes me away, here's a couple of quick pros and cons to wrap the video up. A couple of pros. I'm enjoying the dice game so far, and there appears to be quite a lot of kind of peripheral stuff to do in the game that I haven't even touched on yet, like alchemy and crafting, you can sharpen your own sword at the blacksmith. There's all kinds of additional activities to do, along with things like pickpocketing and stealing, and a lot of sneaking around that I want to do once I figure out some of the side stuff to do outside of the main quest. Let's also talk about a couple of the bugs that I've run into. I've gotten, I think, two quests so far where they got to a point where they froze and I had to reload a save, 
losing maybe a few minutes of gameplay in order to progress the quest. You also, of course, have what I lovingly refer to as open world game wonk. You've got NPCs that occasionally get stuck in a doorway or walk over a picnic table. There's also some slightly awkward animation transitions. You'll have a bandit looting a body who will just suddenly be standing there yelling at you and stuff like that. I think the game could use, you know, another couple of patches to polish things up. But to repeat what I said in my performance section, I've gotten no hard crashes and, like I said here, only a couple of quest bugs along the way. We'll see if that continues, but that's 9 hours of the game so far, that's a decent chunk, and that's relatively bug free. Nothing that I've experienced in the game so far has taken away from the sheer amazement that I've had that my ridiculous levels of excitement have kind of been validated, at least for me. And of course, like all things on the internet, this is just my opinion, your experience may vary, etc, etc, but guys, I was so excited for this game, and I'm so happy to see how much they've accomplished in just the four years of development since the Kickstarter campaign. It is amazing what they've done. What an ambitious project, and what a fantastic world. Again, I am enjoying the story, and I can't wait to get some sleep first, but dive back in and see what else the game has to offer. If you guys were on the fence, I hope this has shown you a bit of what the game has to offer. If you've had a worse experience than I have, well, let me know in the comments. I want to hear it. I want to hear what you guys are experiencing if you're playing the game as well. Like I said, though, I'm going to go get some rest. For now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.